Well, Linda and I made it to Britt, Iowa. That's kind of like the northern central part of Iowa. And there's something really special going on here. Uh, this is the week of the National Hobo Convention. And it's been going on in Britt for, gee, about 120 years, I think. Yeah. Yep. Long time. Long time. My dad was a hobo, and he was really proud of it. And it was back during the Depression. And he told many stories about riding the rails. And he might have passed right through here at some point. Do you know where the term hobo came from? I'm going to let Linda describe that. Um, I was reading about the Civil War, and the term hobo came up as being started after the Civil War when the boys on both sides were making their way home. So they were always homeward bound, and um, they'd stop at farmhouses or what have you and ask for food and say they were willing to work and uh, for, their, for their meals. And they'd get asked, well, where are, you, where are you bound for? And they'd always say homeward bound. And that they think that's where perhaps that term came from. Hobo. Hobo, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Of course, there's a, they say there's a difference between uh, hobos and tramps and bums. And I'm going to try to get this straight. My father told me it the same way. A hobo is willing to work for his meal and he travels. A tramp is not willing to work for his meal, but he travels, and a bum doesn't travel and won't work for his meal either. <laughs> they, but they say that's the difference in the terminology. And we're here to meet these hobos, and we've got a special one we want to introduce you to. He's probably the most famous hobo there is today. Yeah, right now. That's still riding, and his name is Hobo Shoestring. So stick around for this interview. I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna like this. Yep. All right, here we are in Britt, Iowa. And if any of you are into watching the hobo videos of the, of the guys and the ladies and the men riding trains, then you're gonna recognize this fellow. This is Hobo Shoestring. He's got a channel on YouTube that you're gonna to have to tune in for. And I'm gonna put the link to that video right down below this video in the video description. You know, everybody, dreams or a lot of people dream of living this free kind of lifestyle and being able to take off on a whim and go anywhere they want and a lot of people are going to ask a lot of on my channel they're going to have a lot of comments they're going to ask a lot of questions but i'm going to try to cover some of those right now the first one is how long have you been doing this oh i started in 1989 and a year before that i I wouldn't have ever thought I would ride a train. Even when I seen a train, I never thought about riding it. It just kind of happened up on me in Wyoming one day. Some guy called me down under the bridge and put me on a train and off I went and I was hooked since then. It's like I found my medication I'd been searching for all my life. Do you yeah. find it relaxing to travel this way? Uh, you find it relaxing to travel this oh, yeah, way? It's, it is like a medication, being Asperger's syndrome. I was diagnosed with when, when I was little, and I finally found that motion and that sound that kind of put me in a in a trance. It made my head straight. It seemed <laughs> still does. I remember riding the trains when I was a kid. We used to travel that way back, go from west coast to east coast to visit family, and I I just loved it. You know, just the the train ride was soothing hey i gotta ask you though did did that fellow did he actually teach you how to ride and tricks well, of the he, trade he asked me where i wanted to go and i remember telling him seattle and he of course told me where to get off and uh but i didn't care i just one ear out the other i just wanted to roll and be in motion so i stayed on until the end of the line it went all the way to stockton california from laramie wyoming in two and a half days I just rode it until they yarded the train to end, end of that route. <laughs> How do you figure out what train goes where? God, it, it took about eight to ten years of just jumping on any train and riding it to the end of the line. And then if I was ever through there again, I would, I would know that. And it, it just took experience. 
just years and years of doing it over and over and but I always wondered that when I first started riding I'm like how do these guys know all this you know but it just you just learn it over time I suppose because there's, there's probably no big map that just shows you where every yeah. train goes right uh, even if there was you, you wouldn't know when and what time yeah or what they were hauling well, here at the National Hobo Convention in Britt, Iowa, there's a lot of people that show up every year for this. And it's not, and you know, the, the hobos themselves have been coming here for, for many years. And there's a lot of interesting individuals here. We're, I'm gonna to try to talk to some of the other ones too. But there's a lot of people here that also show up just because they like to be in this atmosphere and to learn what they can from these folks. Yeah. Yeah, it's my third time coming I came in 2000 and 2001 but I didn't run for king and actually I didn't even stay for the election I just left a few days early of course that was back in my heavy drinking days and I didn't want to be embarrassed and embarrassment so I've got a neighbor yeah, the flies <laughs> so you're all you're all sober nowadays though yeah six yeah. years now six years yeah. uh, good for you Every year they elect a king and a queen, and we're thinking that it would be really cool if we had a king shoestring this year. So, fingers crossed that hobo shoestring here gets elected. Uh, I'm glad I still got <laughs> fingers too crossed. I'm almost done on that hand. <laughs> Riding the train can be dangerous, and, uh, and people do get hurt, and that's how uh, shoestring here lost the two fingers of his left hand very painful experience and when I got hit by the car uh, even though it wasn't a freight train accident had I not been riding a freight train I wouldn't have gotten hit by a car I had just gotten off a box car and 45 seconds later crossed the road from the yard and got hit <laughs> hit by an automobile yeah. yeah that was he says that was bad too it hurt his right arm yeah they did eight surgeries and I think I got 17 bolts and pins and stuff in there. They really? said I could eventually get that hardware taken out. It is starting to bother me now. Well, gee, that's a, that was a serious thing. Oh yeah, this, this was worse than this. So you know, a lot of people are gonna be asking, where do you sleep? And what's it like sleeping on the train? Well, a lot of people think I sleep on the ground. I, I do sleep on the ground, but nine times out of ten, I'll, if I'm in a near a railroad yard, I'll, I'll find a boxcar or something or a grainer and get up on it off the ground. But I hardly ever carry a tent. Hardly ever. It just takes too much time to set it up. And then you got to pack it, mm -hmm. pack it away. And if the railroad bull runs you off, it you got to take extra time. You're trying to get out get out of his hair and you're trying to roll that damn tin up yeah it would take time to get underway but like if it's real bad mosquitoes like alaska i always get a tent you you just have to have one there so you've been up to alaska how many times uh 32 times since, since 1990 32 times yeah. i went three times <laughs> just last year I just go on a whim. I never plan on it. It's just a thought, and I'm hardly going up there the next day. Yeah. But after being so sick from that COVID or that vaccine, I, whew, I don't know when I'm going to go up there next. Yeah, the vaccine made you pretty sick, yeah? yeah six months, down and out. Yeah. So when you're traveling, when when do you know where to get off? Like if you, if you know, well, the, you, after a while you learn where all the crew changes are. And oh. That's where they switch out, put fresh uh, engineer and conductor on the train. And they're always in the same town, unless they run out of time and do it out in the middle of nowhere. But a lot of times a train will stop in the siding to let another train go by and you can get off there and, and that's usually a better way because it's not burnout. Not many people get off there and mess up stuff. Cleaner environment then, if yeah. you get off kind of out remotely a little bit then. Especially if it's off a 
a big interstate. You don't have many hitchhikers that go through there. You don't have many train riders. You always know there's going to be another train stopping in that side, and even though it's going to be harder to get on the train, but you're you're never in a hurry. So, have you had much problems with the uh, with the bulls or with the police? Uh, I used to. It it's like at different times of the, of the year they're worse. Lately, I haven't hardly shoot. It's been two or three years since I've been caught by the bull. But a lot of people think it's. It's kind of like when you ride trains, you're trying to get away from them. It's cat and mouse game, but it's really not. I mean, they got to do their job. Their their main goal there is to keep people from driving their car over the tracks and getting hit. Or local town people breaking into the railroad cars and stealing products. But if they do see a, a person trespassing riding a the train, they'll, they'll usually give them a ticket. Hey, if you... If you've been caught before, you might spend a night or two in jail, which I've probably gone three or four dozen times overnight. Mm. But usually you, you're kind of needing something to eat and a shower anyway and a cot to sleep on, so it, it don't matter going to jail. <laughs> you just got a play, uh, place to sleep and free meals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, my own father was a hobo. I'm a son of a hobo, and he did tell me about getting busted uh, by the by the bulls and put in jail. And they they wanted to make him work. And back then, they you know if you went to jail, you went out the next day and they made you clean streets or dig ditches or something. But he refused, and so they refused to feed him. But the other prisoners. They respected my dad for refusing to work. And as they went by his sale, cell, they would hand him food into his cell as they went by. And he I don't know how many days he was in, but he told me about that. By the way, um, being a hobo doesn't mean that you don't have a home or can't have a home. It just means that you have this wanderlust that you have to fulfill. So you might have a place that you call home. In my dad's case, he didn't have a good home and he had to leave when he was like 13 years old. I, th I bet you that's the same thing for a lot of people nowadays. Maybe they just like to get away from home for a while and get out and ride the rails for a while. Some of them do it extensively and some of them do it periodically. Am I right? Yeah. Now, for me, I, for 31 years, I I didn't have a home, but it was by choice. I didn't want a, a place. I just couldn't settle down. But just since I got ran over and then hit by that car, it's, I don't know, it did something to me inside. I just can't keep up like I used to. So I got that little apartment in Tennessee last year, and I hardly ever stay there. I'm out still out here more, but it's good to have a place where I've got permanent doctors now. I think no matter how healthy you are, by the time you hit my age, you're going to need a doctor anyway. Uh, Heck yeah. Well, listen, uh, that was really great. I hope we answered some of the questions that you guys are going to have, and I hope we covered some of that. And be sure to check out Hobo Shoestring on YouTube, link below. You see, the thing is that I know you have to travel light. You know, you can't take too much stuff because you got to throw a bag up in a boxcar and climb in after it. You can't be throwing 100 pounds up in there. So just, I, you, of course, sleeping bag. And you mentioned that, but you don't take a tent normally. Yeah. Ground cloth? Yeah, oh, definitely a tarp. What about something, a pad to sleep on? Yeah, I do now. Once I hit about 35 and everything hurts, I, I get, well, the one I got now, it's the real expensive one, but it's, uh, I wouldn't advise spending much money. The, you can go to the Army Surplus store and get a regular Army issue mat for like 15 bucks used. The used ones are better. I don't even think they make them anymore like they used to, but they're, that's perfect. Do you carry anything to cook with? No. Nah. Now, you if I do, like if I stuck somewhere two or three days and don't want to eat out of a can, I'll go to the local Salvation Army thrift store and pick up a pot or pan and just use that and just leave it like when I leave by the track. Somebody else will come along and use it. Because, you, you know, if you look online, there's all the ways of building a hobo stove. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think they're more or less grabbed people's attention just to watch the video. I've, I've never even met anybody out here that's had one of them. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. it's so delicate, too. You end up, as soon as you threw your bag off a train, you'd smash. Well, what's some stuff that you do not leave home without? A tarp, a lighter, and always, like, paper towel or a water, a whole, like, section of newspaper. That way you can always get you a fire. And w, a little can of WD-40, you can spray that on almost anything wet and start a fire. And a little thing of Vaseline and a, about 15 or 20 cotton balls. You can swab them cotton balls in the Vaseline and... For fire starter. Yeah, it goes quick. Yeah. That Vaseline's flammable, but not torch flammable. Right. What about, uh, what kind of, you carry a pocket knife or something? Yeah. And I, I, Folding knife? I or? am real adamant about brands that I get as far as clothing and gear. Like, I'll, I don't get nothing but Case. Case is top line knife and it really sharpens easy and it's copper hinged. It doesn't wear out. You, I'll probably have this if I live a, another hundred years. And Carhartt, Carhartt pants, the double front double line ones not insulated but you can walk through wild roses uh anything and not not get poked or cut i've had those they're, they're stiff but they're safe yeah <laughs> now i bought a pair of uh i can't remember the company right now they make them out of fire hose duluth trading duluth oh, trading they make hose. they make good clothes duluth trading company yeah they're like 72 bucks for a pair i got a pair but they're softer, actually softer than Carhartt, but I, the way the pockets are, are on the side, you end up when you rest your arms sitting, you're right on those seams in the pockets. The stuff in your pockets get in the way, so it's just designed wrong. Mm. But the material's okay, it's softer than I ever thought it would be. You hear that Duluth Trading Company? Your pants that you make out of fire hose, like the Carhartts, they need a little redesigning, so this man would know. <laughs> and these, you can get these at any sporting goods store there. You can drop them in an aquarium of water overnight and they'll still strike in the morning. Pine Mountain matches. Wind and waterproof match. Yeah, that would be important to have. And thank God I've, I've actually never had to use anything emergency out on the rails, like the emergency blankets, the emergency medical kits, uh, emergency matches. I have never had to use any of that in all my time. What about a rain jacket or something? That's another thing. A lot of people actually send me ponchos and stuff like that, but I watch the weather so close and actually I studied meteorology for four years before I rode trains. So I'm pretty good with keeping track of the weather. I've actually only been caught out in the soaking rain twice in 32 years. I always get a good Doppler radar app on my phone to keep track of exactly where the rain is. But a tarp, uh, eight by 10 is sufficient. But I mean, I lay that down first and then my mat, then my bedroll. But I should have brought my summer, uh, my winter bag because I just don't have enough cushion right now. But I had the weight issue though, and I've been yeah. out of commission sick for four or five months. And I, I got out of shape so bad, I, I really couldn't carry too much. So I'm gonna have to slowly get back into the game. I hadn't been this out of shape since before I graduated, before I went in the military. So would you say the trick then is to not, is to, I, I suppose somebody starting out would, I remember when I first left home with a backpack and let me tell you, the stuff in that pack was ridiculous mm -hmm. when I took along. So better to just go with less than you think you need yeah i see a lot of newbies out here the novice come out and they got 80 90 pounds of gear and don't use 95 percent of it but a bedroll a gallon of water two cans of your favorite soup or chili or crackers and a tarp that's about all you're gonna need so you guys that are getting ready to hit the road or hit the rails this is what he's telling you is go light. <laughs> also, you can get these any hardware. They're really strong clips. And uh, you can hold a tarp up on a tree or side of a grain car. Uh, they're really good. They're only like 97 cents. 
And you can buy various size ones too. So you don't have to tie knots, you can just clip it up. Yeah. And also, if you can find a rare earth magnet, they're good for holding stuff up too, but you gotta have metal. So. Gotta have a box car or freight, yeah. uh, freight car of some kind. <laughs> so I also saw that, of course, nowadays everybody's got to have their their phone because that's how we communicate that's how we navigate and that's how he takes and uploads his videos edits them everything on his phone but he also has to carry a solar charger or some way of uh, charging that phone that's got to go with him too a lot of people don't know but they ask me where do i charge my phone and i'm surprised how many people ask me that but if you, if you look at billboard signs along the highway, you go to the bottom of that pole and probably two thirds of the time there's a electrical outlet on the bottom of that billboard sign on that metal pole that holds really? the sign up. <laughs> if, you're, if it doesn't, you can take one of the wire nuts off and splice into it and charge. There you Make go. Make sure you're grounded real good with some good <laughs> boots and your feet aren't wet. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot. Appreciate you, it. You bet. <laughs> oh, you I, I didn't know you were recording until a while ago. <laughs> a minute ago. <laughs> there you got it natural. He didn't even know we were recording. <laughs> <laughs> Just a camera on a stick. How you doing? All right, what's up? I didn't know you was making a video. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was just walking down. Or... No, I was just walking down the tracks. So I was just talking about you. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why my ears itch. Where did that go? Yeah, my ears burn. Yeah. Oh, are you gone again? <laughs> yeah, gone again. Oh, okay. Hey, how's it going? Good. Do you watch? Do you watch our channel? Yeah. I was, well, I was watching it yesterday. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. I was watching it yesterday when he was on uh, Houston. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty cool. Nice to meet you. Yeah. What's well, your name? Jawtooth. Oh, you're Jawtooth. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. So I, I thought I introduced. No, you. I'm Rick from yeah. Gone Again. Yeah. Glad yeah. to meet you, Jawtooth. Well, I was waiting good. for you to show up. Yeah. Or I thought I introduced y'all. <laughs> no, no. Well, you might. I might not have been there. Maybe Linda was there. Oh. Yeah, because I heard that what you do is go around and you photograph trains. That's your thing, right? Yeah. Just anything to do with trains. I just film anything with trains. Yeah. And I've got all kinds of stuff that I got recently from West Virginia, steam trains. Um, I got a post still. Photographs or videos? Videos, yeah. I do all videos. Is there any particular type of train that you look for or anything? Or? Uh, mainly short lines. Yeah, short lines. They're really interesting. I, I like the short lines that are kind of hard to find, the ones that don't run every day. I like the challenge of getting trains that no one else is filming. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a nice hobby. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was younger, when I f first started working, one of the guys I worked with, his hobby, I was I was telling uh, Shoestring about this, his hobby was photographing train cars, and he collected it, you know, and and he he would go, he would head out on vacation looking for a car that he didn't have yet. Hmm. And that was that's his cool. whole thing. Yeah. yeah. But you do with video. Yeah, yeah. I look for stuff that no one else is filming, and. Um, Sometimes I strike out. I went to um, Natural Tunnel, Virginia. I was there for two and a half days trying to film a train going through that tunnel. Only two trains went through the whole time I was there and they were both at night. Yeah. So I didn't get a video out of that one. God, I hope I got this. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> I was thinking, I'm thinking, did I turn off my microphone? As I, was, I was shutting down my camera. I was thinking, did I turn off my microphone while I was walking over here? I go, God, I hope not. No. <laughs> I struck out a lot and I was in Pennsylvania. Uh, I spent two days trying to get a street running train in this town in Pennsylvania near Pittsburgh. I fit the name of it now. Didn't see anything. But Well then you you must spend a lot of time kinda of like waiting, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> a lot of time waiting. Yeah, like waiting for a ride. <laughs> yeah. That's why sometimes my wife doesn't go with me a lot because she doesn't want to sit around and wait all day for a train. Yeah. <laughs> Those ones I got in uh, Mason City were really interesting today, the um, electric trains. I just heard about those earlier today. There's like, they got like two of them left or something like that, or? This is the only spot in the United States that has electric uh, freight locomotives. 
There was another one, I think it was uh, Mesa Railroad or something like that out west in the desert, but they closed mm -hmm. down. Black Mesa, I think it was. It went to a coal mine, from a coal mine to power plant. They closed down. So now this is the only electric uh, freight railroad left in America. Interesting. I always wanted to get that. I had that on the, the top of my list to film that. Then when I found out about this hobo convention going on, I thought, hey, I can get both of them in, the, in one stop. Hey, listen, when I do this video, I'll, I'll look up that, I'll try to look that up on your on your channel and I'll link it. Okay. Are, are you gonna put that up about the electric uh, yeah, freight? I'll, I'll be posting. Um, I'm not sure when I get back, but when I get back home, I'm gonna, as soon as possible, I'm gonna start putting some videos up from that, at least that electric one, because that is really cool. That is cool. Yeah. Well, when I, when I see that, you know, I'll, I'll link it on this video where this where this interview comes out. Okay. Thanks, oh, Jawtooth. Right. Thank yeah, you very thanks. much. Nice to meet you. I'll put a link on there to your channel too. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate right. it. Well, usually they have a hole in them. You can see in. I don't want to climb up there with everybody. Yeah, I hear you. But he should have them railroad guys in there. I know. Let's see if he's empty. Oh, he's got something in there. There's something in there. Yep. Might be dirt ballast. I couldn't hear it land. Did it sound like a pump or a? It almost sounded like it was hitting gravel or something. Oh, maybe it is ballast. I don't know. Or a mix of dirt and this. Huh? Yeah. I'm just climbing. Yeah. There's a crack. I don't that's still a two steps to get up that far. But every car you always get to, you'll see most of the graffiti like this you see is car car workers that do that. They'll carry a pin while they're changing brakes out or hoses, they'll scribble yep. their their little moniker. Like Beaumont Rambler. That was probably still is the most widespread tag you see. You can probably Google it. Google images and a Beaumont Rambler. It's a champagne glass with three bubbles in it. He kind of worked cars where I grew up, in Port of Beaumont, Texas, and Port Arthur. That was Santa Fe Railroad he worked for back in the day. Oh, who is that? I don't know if this is grain elevator people, it probably is. Hey guys. Hey. Hello. You know you gotta be over there. Yeah, we know. We're, we're heading back right now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know the rules. Yeah. Anybody does. <laughs> well, these weren't here yesterday. I don't, well, they're, they're dropping ties. They're going to be oh, tie replacement. We were they used that backhoe and it actually sits on top of the rails. And they drop ties along the side of the tracks as they go. Oh, oh these these they're, they're, they're full yeah, of ties. Yeah, well, they oh, were. They were. Yeah. I mean, they've been dropping them all the way since Mason yeah, City. Yeah. I don't know that they have a lot left. But yeah. Cool. They just park it here. And... Yeah, I seen a, a regular street truck pushing them. I'm like, way mm -hmm. out of all the riding, I've never seen nothing like that. Hey guys, thanks for being so nice. We'll head back over. Yeah. <laughs> Not my first hobo day. No, I bet it isn't. I bet it isn't. It's mine. <laughs> to, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right. 21 now. 21. Yeah. yeah. Well, working. Yeah. I've lived here forever. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. A few more than that, but not working. We've had such a nice time. We got, we got here on Tuesday. I was going to stay overnight. My wife and I were going to leave. These folks over here are so nice. We just settled right in. We've been enjoying yeah. it every day. It's been yeah, just great. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we'll see you. I'll see you. Have a good oh. night. Thank you. Yeah. Well, they were cool. Yeah, very. Very. Oh, I seen that badge, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of recognized them when they were coming up because I saw them earlier. So. I figured we'd get to chat with them a little I'm bit. The cart over by the well, we didn't get thrown in jail. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> well, that's what it's like, though, for trespassing on the railroad. They are watching, so you got to be real careful. We were just looking over the car over there and kind of wondering what was inside and where it was going, and that was all, yeah. I didn't, of course, my eyes were so bad. I, 
like a VHF. I had to wait till I heard what you were saying. Then I looked on the shirt and seen that badge and the gun. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> he didn't know they were police when they were coming up on us. They were nice guys. They were they were, they were were Brit police. We, had, we ended up having a nice conversation with them. But yeah, we were trespassing. Bad boys. That's the first time I ever trespassed on railroad property. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking to Shoestring the other day and he said that out in the areas where the hobos like to uh, kind of camp out and in the bushes and things like that and wait for a ride, he brings along packets of seeds. He brings along things like melons and squash and stuff like that and he plants it so that there might be something there to eat <laughs> if the deer don't get it first. He says he also sometimes just plants flowers. Now, Hobo Shoestring is quite a guy. He, his videos are very organic. He just shoots them on his phone, uploads them from his phone, doesn't do any fancy editing or anything like that. And he talks to you like he's talking to a friend. So I strongly encourage you to go to his channel, Hobo Shoestring. I'll leave a link down below this video and please subscribe to his channel. He is as nice in person as he is on his videos. And he, you'll, he'll give you a good slice of hobo life. Show you what it's like. Well, Hobo Shoestring missed getting elected the official hobo king by this much, but he's still the king of the hobos. Yeah, and the guy that got elected king of the hobos is a really nice guy too, and his name is Baz. There you go. And we're going to have an interview with Baz up shortly, so stay tuned for that.